that ACL repaired in early January. It was thought that he might miss the start of this season, and nothing is confirmed yet, but things appear to be on track that he could be ready week one, which would be huge for Tom Brady and these Buccaneers. And, of course, there's Tom Brady. He turns 45 in just a couple of days. That number's big, but you know what looms larger? This is the guy that led the league in touchdowns just a season ago, Jamie. Yes, Sarah, it is good to see you again. I hope you've gotten a chance to go see Top Gun since we didn't have <laughs> that opportunity down in South Jersey. But Julio's not the only new thing going on in Tampa. Todd Bowles is now his first season as the Buccaneers head coach. What can we expect from him now in Tampa? What's interesting about this team, they go 13-4 and four a season ago, but that was a team that made no changes from when they won the Super Bowl. It was every starter returning, and now there's some significant changes here. And, Jason, you mentioned just starting at the top with Todd Bowles. Ironically, as soon as he became head coach, he became the head coach in this division with the most head coaching experience because of those seasons that he had with the Jets. So that shows you the turnover here in this division and that this team is really poised to make a run. Perhaps the biggest challenge that Bowles is going to have early on is this schedule the Bucks have the fourth toughest schedule in the NFL and it starts with Dallas New Orleans Green Bay Kansas City I mean that's a gauntlet right there that Bulls has to get this team through and then some of the significant changes and veteran changes and Dominican Sue is gone JPP is gone and then over on the line Tom is going to have two new starting guards they lost Alex Kappa and Ali Marpet and that was a unit that was very cohesive they had been very healthy Tom Brady was sacked fewer than any other quarterback in the league last season so there are some significant significant pieces that Todd Bowles has to get in place but look Tom Brady didn't come back to pad any stats other than the one when it comes to rings and he is searching for ring number eight Jamie I know he is blinged out he's got better accessories than you and I do Sarah thank you so much we will check back in with you again I am sure I got nothing all right Julio Jones is I know <laughs> I know lame uh, Julio Jones is 33 years old and he's entering his 12th season in the league uh, so let's flash back to 2007 when one Randy Moss joined the Patriots in his 10th season in the league we'll look at his stats here they jumped up when he started catching balls from Tom Brady Some. You know, I mean, a lot to be said about the quarterback difference there sure. between 06 and 07. Um, but sure, you can put a little asterisk next to the fact that in New England, he was, you know, with Tom Brady. 23 touchdowns. It's pretty fantastic. So will the Tom Brady effect happen to Julio Jones when he arrives in Tampa? Well, let's, first of all, I think, let's just remember Julio. I'm glad we showed the Randy thing. I think the three most gifted receivers in the history of the game are first name only guys. Randy, Calvin, and Julio. I'll put them mm -hmm. in the top three. Mm -hmm. Physically gifted guys, top three all time and Peter started out in the, in the, the start of the show saying Julio Jones on the Titans was pretty rough it was it was what we call a not New Jersey it was like a completely forgotten thing and yet I just want to remind us remind everyone at home there was at least one moment last year with Julio as a Titan blew our minds let's roll it this is Julio Tannehill looking rolling right finding time throwing deep downfield for Jones off the helmet Julio Jones catches it and let's see. Hyde had no idea where the ball was, and the veteran set him up brilliantly. Yeah, Julio Jones, that's what a veteran move downfield. Even Julio's got a smile on his face after that one. All right, th that guy, that was a year ago. That was not 12 years ago, nine years ago with Matt Ryan. This is last year, Julio from Ryan Tannehill. Toe drag, one of the best safeties in the league. Is that, it doesn't, that guy is now showing up to Tampa. And here's the best part. Julio does not need to be Julio Jones with Tampa. He doesn't need to go for 80 catches. He doesn't need to dominate. They basically need him for two catches in a big playoff game in January. That's it. They got all of the other guys, Godwin and Evans. Just show up late in the season, Julio, and make a couple crazy plays to win us a playoff game. That's basically all they need him for. He's that good, and I think he's also a little bit of a Gronk replacement. I oh, like this a lot. You're I just killing take it? me. Yeah. God, you're I'm taking Jamie's so take. Frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> Let's think about Brady lost Gronk. I'm sorry. Go ahead. That's a beautiful thing. That's, good. That's <laughs> that is great teamwork. And I think you just said it. Hey, can we put up what the guys in Tampa Bay last year, their statistics? I think you said it. We don't need Julio Jones to be the Randy yeah. Moss that was in year yeah. 10. Had two receivers over 1,000 yards. Both of those guys, Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. Then they also had Russell Gage coming in with 770 yards coming from Atlanta. But also, I want to touch base on Mr. Rob Gronkowski. When he first got to Tampa, he had some good stuff to say. Can we hear from Rob Gronkowski? 
because every time I had to film myself and send it in, you know, in order to get credit for the workout and stuff. So like that, that was kind of getting a little annoying, but then I started tricking them because I would bring a shirt, my shirt out, and then I would bring another shirt out. So when I'm running the sprints, I would film myself like 15 times for for that session, that workout session. But I would run it in a couple different shirts because you only had to send in like two or three reps. So then when the next time came, I didn't have to film myself because I already filmed myself running in a different shirt uh, every time on that one day. And he ain't never, he hasn't had a clue to this day that I was tricking him uh, about half the time uh, during those virtual workouts. Mm. Gronk is showing Julio the way to get it done. <laughs> I think he's showing Kyler Murray, This too. isn't yeah. the same oh. thing. It's not the same type of work. He's a veteran. You'll have your vet days. He will be healthy. He will be well rested. There it goes. Mm. I mean, I forgot they had Gage, too. Gage was good last year for you the like Falcons. Mm -hmm. and good two years ago. So you've got those three and him. Um, you know, the weird one, Kevin Garver, you know, it's the wide receivers coach for the Buccaneers. He was Julio's GA at Alabama. So, like, wow. there's, like, this, like, other connection of, like, hey, I'm going back to play with my guy from college. Uh, but this is all Brady. Julio wanted to play for Brady. The numbers made a lot of sense. And I'll be honest, he wasn't great on the Titans. He wasn't healthy on the Titans. And there's a lot of doubters going into last offseason, whether Julio had anything left in the tank. Um, I have low expectations, but gosh, I would love to see him exceed them and end his final chapter with Brady and maybe a Super Bowl ring. But he's a Hall of Fame wide receiver, and it's it, it's cool to see him being catching passes from Tom Brady. Mm. Yeah, we started this with Randy Moss, but yeah, we all ended up on Rob Gronkowski because if you just add three inches and 30 pounds, you go from Julio Jones to Rob Gronkowski. Mm -hmm. What did we want out of Rob Gronkowski after he retired? We wanted him to come back in December and just boost mm -hmm. them to the playoffs. Now, they didn't, now he doesn't need to, which he has already proclaimed he's not going to do because now they have Julio Jones to take care of his. I think we're fired up about it. At least three of us are. Peter, yeah. you seem to be zagging here. Does this feel like like Randy Moss on the Niners or something to you? That was okay. They went to the Super Bowl there. I know, but like, I, 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 mm. I just don't know. I think everyone's, you know, the headline comes out and everyone's Julio, Julio. Yeah. It's a big name. All right. Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Guess what I want to awesome. do? Will Selva, Will Selva, Will Selva, Will Selva. He's out blue, on the West Coast. He's athletic. It was a blue Hello, thing. Will Selva. I'm thrilled yes. for you. Yes. Whatever team you're on. <laughs> What's going on there, Jamie? And guys, Jamie, that morning email is very, very important. You got to get those topics in as soon as you can. <laughs> Otherwise, it's no, like I'm change the literally, order. it's like. <laughs> The, the, the buzzards are just like literally around mm -hmm. that carcass. So get, get them in. Get them in, you know. Uh, either way, good to see you guys this morning. Uh, 49ers head coach Kyle Shanahan did not mince words on Tuesday when he talked about who his starting quarterback was going to be, saying, quote, we've moved on to Trey. Of course, Trey being Trey Lance. Well, now that leaves the future of Jimmy Garoppolo up in the air, but there was some good news, at least for prospective trade partners out there. NFL Network Insider Ian Rappaport reporting Garoppolo passing his physical and will not be placed on the PUP list. By passing his physical, the Niners are now also clear of a $7.5 million injury guarantee for Jimmy G. Meanwhile, in other QB news, the Bengals will be without Joe Burrow for a bit. Rap Sheet reporting Joe Burrow is undergoing surgery to remove his appendix and will miss some practice time. Backups Brandon Allen and Jake Browning will be the, taking the quarterback reps in camp until Burrow returns. In Pittsburgh, Steelers safety Minka Fitzpatrick will be placed on the active non-football injury list with a wrist injury sustained when he fell off of a bike during a vacation.